Welcome to Node-RED in the Ham Shack. I'm Dave DeCoons, WO2X. Node-RED was developed by IBM in 2013 as a method of connecting various hardware devices, programming APIs, and internet services in different and unique ways. Node-RED was uh, opened up to uh, open source by IBM in a way of fostering the development. And uh, three years after their release of Node-RED, they had over 350,000 installations worldwide. Node-RED is a low-code programming tool based on Node.js programming language. The editor and dashboard can be accessed by any web browser, uh, whether it's PC, Mac, uh, Debian, Linux, even smartphones and tablets. About five years ago, Andreas Jung and 6NU started using Node-RED as a method of creating a graphical dashboard for a Step IR controller and also interface other software and hardware in a shack and have the controller follow the flex radio frequency. Andreas introduced Mike Walker to Node-RED and Mike has written a flow for the KPA 500 amplifier for his shack. I started using Node-RED about two years ago. I was in the hospital several times uh, for a total of 50 days and I wanted to be able to use my station remotely. Uh, controlling the flexor mode is easy with Smart Link, but I wanted to be able to control the amplifier, uh, be able to turn it on and off, bring it online or standby, uh, turn my rotor, and also be able to turn other equipment on and off on demand. Also, I wanted to be able to have a way of resetting equipment in case anything locked up or got stuck on the air. So I started programming in Node-RED and created flows for the Elecraft KPA 1500 amp uh, my rotor, which is uh, using a uh, high gain DCU uh, serial interface, and also for the DLI Web Switch Pro, which gives me eight individually switched outlets on and off. My antenna control is done using the 403A Antenna Genius. It allows me to have automatic antenna selection per band, or also be able to select antennas on demand on each band. For my Node-RED installation, I purchased a Raspberry Pi Model 4 with 4 gig of RAM. Uh, the difference between a Model 3B and a Model 4 price-wise wasn't that much. I decided to go with the Model 4 uh, just to make sure that I have enough memory and enough uh, horsepower uh, for any future needs uh, within uh, Node-RED and anything else that I want to use the Pi for. I'll cover installation of the Raspberry Pi operating system, Node-RED, FR stack and other software along with flows later on in this video. One of my goals for using Node-RED was to have a central uh, single dashboard for being able to access information from different pieces of equipment and software and also be able to have a single point of control. This is useful when I was running remote uh, using either an iPhone or an iPad and being able to control the station uh, instead of having multiple applications, and especially applications that are running on Windows only, it uh, becomes difficult to be able to run those applications remotely. Why Node-RED? It's simple to interface various hardware and software that normally cannot communicate together. It's inexpensive. It can run on a Raspberry Pi, Windows PC, Linux operating system, or even in a cloud as a cloud-based service. Uh, Raspberry Pis are relatively inexpensive. Uh, they're low energy consumption, so they can run for a long time without costing a lot of money. Node-RED can be run using Alexa voice commands and also using an Elgato Stream Deck, either direct or using FR Stack. Uh, FR Stack is a third party utility for flex radios and FR Stack can be loaded directly onto the Raspberry Pi with Node-RED. Uh, the Stream Deck uh, comes in different flavors. I have a 15-button model, and the 15-button model allows me to have uh, buttons pre-programmed where I can execute different commands at the push of a button. I can also stack commands. I can have a single button where if I want to tune my antenna, I would go ahead and put the amp to standby, set the radio tune power, put the radio into tune, and engage the antenna tuner, and then once it's complete, it dekeys the radio and puts the amplifier back online, uh, all at the single push of a button. In Node-RED, we create flows, which are a set of instructions 
to allow us to take the information to or from equipment, the user input, and also put it out to a dashboard so that we can see the information from the equipment. Think of a flow as program. In order to create a flow, we take nodes which are wired together to create the flow. Uh, there are various nodes that perform specific functions. Uh, you have input nodes, uh, function nodes, which actually perform functions on the data being passed between each node. Uh, that data is known as a message payload. And there's also output nodes, uh, which can then take that data and send it off to equipment, software, or show it up on the dashboard in the web browser. In order to access the Node-RED editor, you bring up a web browser, and in the web browser, in order to access it, you type in the address of the Raspberry Pi, which is my Node-RED server, colon 1880, which is the default port. And we hit enter, and it brings up the Node-RED editor. And once you uh, are open, on the left are your nodes uh, that are currently loaded in, and there's various nodes. There's input nodes, output nodes, and also function nodes, which, again, uh, perform specific functions on the data being passed to it. In order to create a flow, uh, you drag a node from the left, and you would just drag that into the work surface here. So what we're going to do for this example is show you using an uh, inexpensive four-relay hat that you can plug into a Raspberry Pi. A uh, hat is a board that plugs into the, the GPIO pins directly on the Raspberry Pi. So on Amazon, there's a four relay board, uh, the KS0212, uh, uh, which is less than $10. Uh, there's also a, a specific set of uh, nodes that can be downloaded for the KS0212 uh, relay board and they would show up right here. So in order to load any additional nodes, uh, in the right, you would click on uh, the little three horizontal lines, go into Manage Palette, and here, if you wanted to install something, you could hit Install, and if I go um, KS0212, this is what I had installed for the relay control. So do you see Node Red Contrib Key Studio Relay Shield KSO212. So I've already installed those. So in order to create this, uh, what we need is we need buttons, um, or we're going to use switches to control the node and or control the relay. So I'm going to drag a switch in, and we're going to drag four of them in here. And we're just going to go ahead and create four switches uh, for the four relays. And we can even name these if we want. We can name it Relay 1. Uh, we can name the second one if we want. We can call it uh, you know, Radio uh, Remote On. And we could just rename them whatever we want. Uh, you can name the third one uh, DC Supply. If you have it wired up into your power switch for the uh, your 12 volt DC supply, and switch four could be just relay four. So now we have our four switches, and we need to make sure also that they're in the proper group. Um, you can create groups. Uh, I have already have a group for testing here called uh, four relay control. So I'm going to make sure that all four of these are in the four relay control group. And now what I'm going to do is, for the relays, again, once I installed the, the node uh, for the KS0212 relay board, I have my four relays here for the board. So I'll just drag those four relays over. And they're re labeled relay J2, J3, J4, and J5. And what I do is I left-click my mouse and I just drag over and connect from one point to the next.
And once I'm done, uh, you got to hit deploy up here. I'm going to hit confirm deploy. In order to access the dashboard, you open up a new web browser and type in the IP address of the Pi, which is my server, colon 1880 slash UI for user interface, and hit enter. And you'll see that the group that we created with the four relays is now on the dashboard. Uh, right now, uh, the switches are in the off position. And if I go back over here uh, to the uh, editor, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see this better. And what we have here is on the relays, on the switches, uh, it shows that they're off. And on the relays, it shows the condition is false, meaning that the relay is not active. So if I go to the dashboard and I turn on uh, any of the relays, it's going to show you that the switch is in the on position. And in the dashboard for troubleshooting, it'll show you that the switch is in the on position and that the relay is now true, meaning that it's engaged. So that's a quick and easy four relay control that you can do within Node-RED. In order to build your Raspberry Pi to get started, uh, we have a group that was started by Mike uh, VA3MW and Andy VA3CW on Groups.io uh, dedicated to Node Red and Ham Radio. Uh, we have over 400 users worldwide now, and a lot of them are contributing to the project, uh, different hardware and software integration. The site is available at the following link groups.io slash g slash node red dash ham radio and if you go to that link uh, you're going to find uh, the home page uh, for the groups io group and there's information on the uh, home page uh, some of the housekeeping uh, just some of the policies we have and also on the left uh, you're going to find uh, a couple of things of interest number one is the wiki and in the wiki, uh, we have uh, two wikis set up. Uh, one is for installing the 32-bit operating system on a Raspberry Pi. And also, the second one is installing the 64-bit operating system on a Pi. Uh, either one will work. And uh, if you click on the 32-bit, uh, it brings up information about it, hardware requirements, and then how to download and install the Raspberry Pi operating system onto the micro SD card. And once that's installed, uh, you put the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Uh, there's some configuration uh, to go through for the Raspberry Pi. And then after that, uh, installing uh, Microsoft.NET Core and then installing uh, Node Red onto the Raspberry Pi. Uh, at that point, uh, if you're not using a flex radio, you're complete with the installation of uh, Node Red. Uh, if you're using a flex radio, uh, you can also install FR Stack, which is a, uh, a very uh, nice utility uh, written by Mark uh, W3II. And FR Stack allows uh, a lot of control and access to uh, different menus and features uh, in the radio using uh, what they call REST commands. Uh, it makes uh, controlling the radio quite easy. And I will demonstrate. Uh, uh, what FR stack looks like, uh, you know, via a web browser. Also, uh, it integrates uh, with FR stack the uh, Elgato Stream Deck, as I mentioned earlier, and that allows for programming REST commands to the buttons on the Stream Deck, uh, where you can execute uh, commands or change uh, menu settings uh, and even stack commands onto the different buttons on the Stream Deck. And that allows for uh, quick and easy uh, changes. If you want to change profiles or uh, adjust power up and down, uh, toggle your amplifier on and off, uh, not only the flex radio, but uh, you could send commands to other radios as well uh, through CIV or uh, CAT commands and uh, other hardware, amplifiers, tuners, antenna switches, and so on. Uh, we have one user that's uh, using uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi with Node Red uh, for antenna switching, uh, switching a four square, 
uh, selecting different beverage antennas. Uh, Node-RED is starting to gain popularity with contest stations. Using Node-RED, along with an Elgato Stream Deck, a uh, contest station uh, can have at the operating position a quick uh, push-button keypad where they can select different antennas, uh, receive antennas. Uh, if they have a stack, uh, they can select different antennas in the stack, uh, different combinations. Also, uh, other functions that uh, they may have to go to different screens in order to get to. Uh, all of this can be consolidated onto a single screen and also functions can be onto the Elgato Stream Deck. On the website, we have a file section. If you click on files on the left side, it's a repository of uh, Node-RED flows for ham radio that uh, some of the users have uploaded and uh, can be downloaded and shared, uh, modified uh, to anything that you need to use. Uh, there's the flows for radios, uh, watt meters, antenna switches, uh, step IR, and uh, all kinds of things. Relay control, uh, AC outlet relays, uh, weather nodes uh, that will disconnect equipment if, uh, if there's going to be inclement weather. So this is a good starting point for you to uh, load some of the flows, experiment, uh, and learn how to use Node-RED. Uh, it's very simple uh, once you start using it, and um, you'll be programming in no time. To load a uh, flow in Node-RED, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to download a uh, flow, uh, and we're going to try Santiago's uh, Pi Monitor flow. So I'm going to click on it, and uh, it downloaded it. I'm going to open it up, and when you open it up, it uh, opened up in Notepad. I'm going to do a Control A to select everything. And I'm going to copy it, and then in the Node Red editor, I'm going to go and click on the three horizontal lines on the right. Go to Import, and in the pink box, I'm just going to paste it. And I'm going to click Import. And I'm going to select Import Copy. And what will happen is I'll have my Raspberry monitor here. And again, in here, you may have to uh, adjust some of these settings depending on your particular uh, system. And um, if you click on these, uh, you'll see uh, one of the measures the temperature of the Raspberry Pi. And uh, there's different functions. Uh, the functions will take the temperature and then format it correctly and then send it out to a temperature gauge on the screen. So once we hit deploy on this and confirm deploy, if we go to our dashboard, you're going to see uh, over here um, ras uh, right here, the Raspberry Control Monitor. And you're going to see my memory free is uh, close to 100%. My CPU's temperature is 47.7 degrees Celsius. My disk space is uh, very low at 14%. And my CPU on the Pi 4 is running between 6 and 14%. And it gives you a graph of CPU temperature over time. So that's... Uh, quick uh, import of uh, a flow and you could do that for uh, other flows as well and to change uh, on the dashboard on the left if you click the three lines you'll see i have different screens for my dashboard uh, this is my main dashboard that i use and um, again with the uh, with the main dashboard here i have the ability to uh, reboot or shut down the Pi. I have my host pings um, for various equipment on the network, including the radio, the PC, the Raspberry Pi, and internet. Um, green LEDs indicate that they're communicating that they can be pinged. Uh, on the left, I have my Elecraft KPA 1500 and interface. I can turn the amplifier from operate to standby. Uh, I can also turn it off and then turn it on. If I turn it off, the power LED goes red. Uh, when I turn it on, uh, it will come back up, goes green, and comes online into operate. Shows me the forward power, the SWR, and the temperature. 
Uh, I have fan control, current fan speed, and I can manually override and turn the fan up on the amplifier. Uh, the second panel over is information from my flex radio. It picks up the model number, the call sign that's programmed in the radio. Uh, the client that's connected, which currently is my desktop computer, the IP address of my client. And then it's also showing me my transmit VFO frequency, the mode, my RF power setting, my tune power setting. And it, when it's in receive, it shows ready. If I transmit, it shows transmitting. Uh, there's internal meters in the radio, and it picks up the internal meters, which includes uh, input voltage at the radio, voltage at the PA, the fan speed of the radio, and PA temperature. Uh, underneath that is my antenna genius, uh, where I'm using three of the eight antennas. So it shows me my current antenna assignments. Uh, into uh, antenna one of the radio, I'm using my five-band Yagi and on 20 meters. And on input two, I'm using the 40-meter antenna, which is a G5RV. Uh, next, I have my antenna control, which gives me an azimuth map. Uh, with tracking or manual, if I want automatic tracking, where in my logging program, I can enter a call sign and the rotor will automatically track uh, to the proper beam heading based on the call sign, or I can hit it manual where it does not automatically track. I can leave the antenna in a fixed position. Uh, the azimuth map I have is based on my location, and also on the map, it's hard to see, but I have all the prefixes for the different countries. And if I want to go ahead and if I want to turn the antenna to a specific prefix, I can click on the prefix and the antenna will turn. Uh, the red shows me my desired direction. The green is the actual. And then once it turns, it turns into that uh, darker shade of red uh, when they're overlaying each other. I can also use the pre-programmed buttons on the right for different beam headings. Uh, if I want to go to 50 degrees, I can click on 50, and the antenna will change over and go to 50 degrees. And uh, Or up underneath the word beam, I have an azimuth input that I can directly input any uh, heading I want. To the right of that is my outlet control. I have eight switchable outlets uh, where I can turn equipment on and off. And uh, you know when it's on, it shows green. When it's off, it shows red. So Outlet 6, uh, if I were to click on it, uh, it toggles it, and I could turn it on or turn that outlet off. Uh, again, to the right of that is my host pings, and it just shows me my network status. The other screens I have, if you install FR Stack, uh, these are default screens from FR Stack, uh, where you can get access to pretty much almost all the settings within the radio. Uh, one of the things it got, gives you is a meter panel uh, that shows you, again, uh, some of the meters that I have also on my, on my screen that I previously showed. And uh, if you have a power genius, it'll pick up the amplifier uh, information as well, or even an SPE amp. Uh, it, there's a panel for the SPE amplifier, and it will show that information. Uh, it shows me my active slice on the radio. And uh, the S meter currently, uh, it's reading 80 uh, minus 87. Uh, on a flex, this is the power that's within your receiver passband. Um, it's different than on traditional radios. And uh, gives you information for antenna. Right now, receive and transmit are selected for antenna two. And I'm on uh, 7.210. And uh, gives you the other settings for the active slice. Uh, it shows me my radio right now is connected. Uh, the nickname of my radio is Sexy Flexi. And uh, if I had more to one radio, uh, you'd be able to select different radios. Uh, clients, uh, it shows me my current client is my desktop. If I had multiple clients connected uh, with Multiflex, I could choose a different client and it would show the information for that client. It uh, goes through the options uh, and mic settings, profile settings, box, uh, then the master audio for the radio, transmit settings such as RF power, tune power, carrier level, and uh, 
the TX settings as well for DAX um, amplifier on or off. Uh, and then if you're using the ATU in the radio, transmit inhibit. Uh, also in FR stack, uh, there's a page that shows each individual slice. On my 6600M, I have four slices, A, B, C, and D. So this gives me the opportunity to go and adjust each of those slices, any of the settings for those slices. Uh, currently, I'm using just slice A and slice B. Uh, so you see slice C and D, there's no S meter reading and there's no frequency. Uh, again, my normal setting uh, that I use would be this page here. And what I would normally do is just run the radio uh, like this. So under normal operating, uh, I run uh, smart SDR underneath with the uh, with the deck. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, with the uh, node red on top, and uh, then on the other monitor, I would run my logging software, contest software, uh, spotting software, DX cluster, anything uh, else that I would need. Okay, I'd like to show you a couple of flows that I've written here for the Flex Radio and uh, also my other hardware and give you an idea of uh, what the programming looks like. So on this here, uh, we're back into the Node-RED editor, uh, the Vita 49 tab. And uh, with this tab here, uh, what I've done is created a flow to take the UDP broadcast packets from the radio uh, and decipher those packets. And what it shows up is the model of the radio, call sign that's programmed into the radio, the client IP, and also the name of the client that's connected at this point. Um, some of the other things it does is it pings the radio to see if the radio is on and that helps to set the messages uh, on the dashboard. When we're in the dashboard, it uh, will show uh, the information here up on top under Flex Radio. Uh, it will show uh, the model number and also the radio call sign when the radio is powered up. When a client physically connects to the radio, it will show the client name and the client IP along with the information for the VFO frequency and mode and the power setting. Uh, when a client disconnects, uh, that information uh, goes blank. And uh, I just disconnected my client, so you can see the deck goes blank. And then if I go over here and click on 6600 power on to shut it down, uh, once it shuts down, uh, the radio information will also go blank. And uh, we'll wait for that to go blank. And it takes about 10 seconds after the radio shuts down. Uh, I have the ping set for every 10 seconds. There it goes. Uh, also, the Flex Radio tab is, again, specific to the radio. And um, it's quite a bit of programming here uh, where I'm able to send commands to the radio uh, get the out uh, through a TCP node, and this connects to the radio through the application programming interface in the radio and gets the information back, uh, transmit VFO, uh, the PA voltage, input voltage, fan speed, PA temperature, and then also the RF power to tune power, current mode of the radio. Uh, the next tab here is my uh, KPA 1500 programming for the amplifier. And again, uh, this connects to the amplifier through uh, TCP, and it allows me to get information out of the amplifier and uh, display that information on the desktop. And that allows uh, for remote control. When I'm running remote, I can actually control and monitor the amplifier uh, right from my smartphone or tablet. Uh, rotor control uh, is designed to interface into uh, PST rotator software. Uh, you can also write it to go and talk directly to different rotors. And uh, what this will do is, uh, again, with PST rotator, it uh, gives me the opportunity to have an azimuth map. I can click on the azimuth map to turn the antenna 
or I can click on any of the preset buttons to turn the antenna and also directly input an azimuth to turn to. Uh, the Antenna Genius 2x8 switch, I'm only using three antennas, antenna one, three, and four. Uh, it's actually written to support a total of 32 antennas, uh, which is four stacks of 2x8 antenna switches. Uh, again, only using three here, so that's all I have enabled. And uh, what this does is you program the Antenna Genius using the Windows application, and this uh, node red will go to the Antenna Genius and interrogate it and get the names of the antennas directly from the Antenna Genius and set them in node red. Uh, this uh, also allows for control of the antennas, uh, switching antennas, either from Node Red, uh, from the Antenna Genius app, or uh, directly from the radio. Uh, the radio is programmed to talk to the Antenna Genius to switch and select antennas automatically. I've also added into here the ability to uh, interface to N1MM Plus uh, that I can uh, control antennas using the Alt-J command from within Antenna, uh, from within N1MM Plus uh, contest uh, logger program. Uh, my DLI Web Switch Pro uh, allows me to, again, turn outlets on and off uh, to control and power different equipment and uh, makes it easy uh, when I want to shut the station down remotely. Uh, the SO2R status was something I wrote for a uh, contest station in Sweden. Uh, he wanted to be able to use N1MM Plus and see which radio was the focus radio which radio was transmitting, uh, and which radio was active. And there's three sets of relays for those three functions. Uh, he wanted to be able to drive um, lights in the station so that the station operators uh, can see um, which radio was either focused, active, and transmitting. Uh, the speech node I can enable, and if right now I have it disabled, but... Uh, this will allow me to have, when I change uh, frequency in the radio or mode, uh, it will read out the frequency in the mode of the radio uh, through the speakers in the computer. Uh, this could be handy for a visually impaired uh, operator that uh, they'd be able to uh, have a way of uh, using an, a software-defined radio and be able to get uh, acoustic feedback of... Uh, when they change frequency mode, and you can actually add other commands on top of that as well. Uh, the one node here uh, called Genovation, I have a Genovation keypad, and with that keypad, it's a 24 button keypad, I can program it and I could have any one of the 24 buttons uh, be able to send uh, information in and be able to send commands uh, to the radio uh, either direct or through FR stack, and be able to, again, have uh, quick control. If I wanted to have the radio QSY to 20 meter FT8, I can have a button programmed uh, dedicated for 20 meter FT8. Uh, just like the Elgato Stream Deck, uh, you can stack commands on that as well. Uh, the next tabs are uh, programming uh, that are for uh, FR stack. Uh, if you install FR Stack, uh, these uh, tabs get populated automatically and uh, handle the connection to the radio, uh, the radio commands, uh, the active slice commands, uh, profile commands, and then also uh, the meters, and then each of the individual slices, A, A B, C, and D, as I showed before. Uh, the host monitor is what I'm using to monitor my network status, uh, where I can see if uh, any of the network, uh, the Raspberry Pi, the PC, the Flex, or my internet connection, a quick glance to see if there's any issues with the network. Uh, also up here are just some of the ones I've been working on uh, for other people to help them. Uh, this was a flow it's disabled right now, but this is a flow I worked on for a station to allow their radio uh, frequency to determine uh, for an 80-meter antenna 
automatically select relays uh, to change the electrical length of the antenna depending on the band segment that they're in. And uh, so that made it nice and automated for them that they didn't have to do anything. Uh, when they change frequency, the antenna automatically adjusts uh, the electrical uh, dimensions of the antenna uh, using relays to be able to uh, change for different parts of the band. And this was the last flow that we loaded as a sample. Uh, this is just monitoring the Raspberry Pi. They showed a temperature, the CPU load, the frequency, disk usage. And uh, so that's uh, what I have programmed in here into my uh, Raspberry Pi that I'm currently using right now. This brings us to the conclusion of Node Red in the Ham Shack. Here are some links to help you get started. Uh, the first link is our Groups I.O. group, uh, which there are a lot of Elmers uh, that are willing to help people get started in Node-RED. You can get Node-RED loaded up, download the flows from there, and uh, the wiki, again, will help you to get started in loading the software. And uh, again, a lot of knowledgeable people on the group that are sharing their flows and willing to help others. The second link, www.nodered.org, is uh, the homepage for Node-RED, uh, which is open source, and there's a ton of information on Node-RED in general, uh, you know, not ham radio specific, uh, but pretty much anything and everything you want to know about Node-RED and uh, how to perform different tasks within Node-RED. Uh, the third link are some videos uh, by a YouTube user named Opto22. Uh, Opto22 is uh, several videos uh, that go through Node-RED, uh, including uh, loading flows and customizing the dashboard, and uh, very useful for getting started with Node-RED. Again, uh, this is Dave, WO2X, and any questions, feel free to email me. 7-3 from WO2X.